السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبي الرحمة والهدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and all his companions And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam it brings tears to the eyes in gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having granted us the acceptance to witness this blessed month. Tonight being the first night of the month of Ramadan 1432 Hijri, 1432 years after the Hijrah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we are seated here in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala far away in the city of Cape Town in this beautiful Masjid Zinatul Islam we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept every single effort of ours every one of us who has made an effort to come here this evening all the listeners all the viewers every single person we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all forgiveness and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lighten up our lives just like we noticed the difference when these lights were put on. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in nur and to grant us the full use of this month of Ramadan. Really, it is a sacrifice. It is a month of sacrifice. It is a month where we will be abstaining from many things for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from a certain time to a certain time. And in the evenings, we will be sacrificing again to stand in long prayer solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, it is an effort that will make us from amongst those who are successful, those who are not prepared to put an effort or to make an effort, what type of success do they expect? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts. This evening, Inshallah, I have decided to embark on a series known as Lessons from the Stories of the Prophets. May peace be upon them all that are mentioned in the Quran. And as you know, it is very important to introduce a topic. So tonight will be dedicated to the introduction. And it is very important that we know what is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects from us. We all know that we were created by Allah. We were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We call him Rabbul Alameen. We call him Lord of the Worlds. And the word Rabb does not have an English translation. It would require a whole paragraph for us to understand what is meant by it. And for this reason, some of the scholars have said the term Rabb includes the one who created, the one who nourishes, cherishes, provides for, protects, the one in absolute control of all the aspects of, in, of existence is known as Rabb. So this is why when we say Rabbun, we are referring to whoever made us and whoever is in absolute control, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. Before I commence, it is very important for me to make mention of the fact that each one of us would like to achieve the pleasure of the one who made us. And each one of us would like to achieve the paradise that he has prepared for us. But where did we come to learn about this paradise from? And where did we come to learn about the fact that there is life after death? We came to learn of it from the creator himself. When he created us, he did not just leave us without giving us an instruction or a manual or sending us messengers to remind us. Indeed, there is no nation that has passed except that there has been a messenger who was sent to that nation. A reminder, a warner. The word nadir in actual fact means a warner. One who warns to say, oh man, you are not in existence in order to enjoy your life. You are actually here as an examination 
and the qualification of that examination will determine your status in the real life which is the life after death and this is why all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they, they were more interested in the life after death and in the hereafter than this dunya none of them gave preference to this world it's important for us to know this and it's important also for us to know that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and sent messengers and sent messages with those messengers there were two types of people that he sent one were those known as Rusul and the others were known as Anbiya there is a difference between a Rasul and a Nabi so what is the difference one is a messenger and one is a prophet the one who has a higher status is a Rasul a messenger because every messenger is a prophet but not every prophet is a messenger and here I'm using the English language although I've used the word Rasul or the word messenger to refer to Rasul what is meant by this a Rasul is a person who came with a new Sharia with some law with a book with something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him an instruction revelation and Allah said go and teach this to the people and go and warn them and so on that is known as a Rasul a person who's a messenger given a message to go and deliver and a Nabi who is a prophet is one who also delivered the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but not given to him specifically but rather given to some message to some messenger who came before him so this is why when we look at Harun alayhi salatu was salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about him in the Quran and Allah says وَنَادَيْنَاهُ مِن جَانِبِ الطُّورِ الْأَيْمَنِ وَقَرَّبْنَاهُ نَجِيًّا وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ مِن رَّحْمَتِنَا أَخَاهُ هَارُونَ نَبِيًّا Allah speaks about Moses may peace be upon him Musa alayhi salam and Allah says we gave him or we sent with him Harun or Aaron may peace be upon him as a Nabi which means as a prophet to help him so whose message was it? It was the message of Allah. Given to whom? Given to Moses. May peace be upon him. But Harun alayhi salam was assisting. That is a very simple verse. If you'd like to know, you can memorize that verse. Harun a nabiyan. If Harun alayhi salam was a nabi, then it's automatically known that a rasul is higher than a nabi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent two types of people. But there is a third type of person who is neither a Nabi nor a Rasul, but he is a Rasul of a Rasul, which means he is a messenger of a messenger. And who is that? Every single one of us. Subhanallah. We are all messengers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have the message. It is our duty to learn it. It is our duty to practice upon it. And it is our duty to teach it to others. This is why when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sending one of his companions Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu to Yemen and he asked him a few questions at the end of that he says Alhamdulillahi alladhi waffaqa Rasoola Rasoolillahi lima yarda Rasoolullah Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has granted acceptance to the messenger of the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to that which has pleased the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah guided Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obviously had sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in turn sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu and he has informed all of us Balighu anni walaw ayah Go and convey the message even if it means a small verse. So every one of us inshallah we have that status. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us for that. Now it is important for us to also go through the creation of man. Why Allah created us and how he created us. It is impossible to know that except through revelation. And this is what makes us believers. If you take a look at the Jewish scriptures or the Christian scriptures, the scriptures of the Muslims, you will find there are some similarities when it comes to the stories of the previous nations and how time began and how man were, was created and so on. But we adopt and we follow the Quran because we believe that there is a lot of rust 
that has crept into the previous scriptures. They are debating amongst themselves as to what is authentic. And there are so many different versions of the Bibles and the scriptures that we have to discount them and we have to adopt what the Quran has said because no doubt it is pure and it is pristine and there is no ways that anybody can argue with that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and when he told us whatever he told us, he told that to us through revelation. So therefore a person who is a non-believer or who does not believe in any of the heavenly religions, they would not know what happened. And if they were to tell you what happened, it means they got it from a heavenly scripture. No scientist can tell you that the first person created was created in this way and his name was Adam. And nobody can tell you that then there was Hawa and what happened. So we need to be Muslimin. We need to be submitters. We need to be Mu'minin, believers in the unseen. And we need to know that these scriptures that have come, they have come as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. Now if we take a look at the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed this book and it is a very very blessed book and Allah has given us the Muslims a month known as Shahrul Quran. It is the month of the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept it the same month as the month of fasting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a night in this month that is so powerful. In it, the Quran was sent down from the preserved tablet to the lowest heaven. Allahu Akbar. And this is why he says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. We have indeed revealed it in the night of decree. Laylatul Qadr translates as the night of taqdeer. The night of decree when all that is going to happen for the next year is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is called Al-Qadr, the night of decree. We all call it the night of power because it also depicts the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is important for us to know that there is no doubt in the book that Allah has revealed. And as Muslims, we are fortunate to be from amongst those who follow a religion that makes it a duty upon us to study all the verses of the Quran, not just a few verses. And Allah says why he revealed the Quran. We need to know this. Why did Allah reveal the Quran? Why did he create man? Why did he do this? Why did he do that? The answers are in the Quran. This is why Allah says, Kitabun anzalnahu. It is a book that we have revealed. Ilaika to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mubarakun. It is so blessed. Liyaddabbaru ayatih. In order for its verses to be pondered upon. So why did Allah reveal the Quran? In order for its verses to be pondered upon. That is the reason. So how many of us have pondered over the verses of the Quran? How many of us have understood why Allah revealed the Quran? Did he just reveal it that we can recite it? No point in understanding or no interest in understanding it. Did he reveal it so that we can use it as a pillow? We read it at night and then we put it away and go and sleep. And the following morning we get up. No. Take a look at what has happened to the Bible and to the other books. Very few followers of those books have read those books cover to cover. But every one of us have heard the Quran cover to cover by the will of Allah. This is why in the month of Ramadan, what are we doing? Great effort is required to prepare the taraweeh, to come for the taraweeh, to stand in the taraweeh. It is not simple. It is not easy to be standing for one hour trying to concentrate on the words. That is a sacrifice. That is an act of worship. That is a gift that Allah has given myself and yourselves. So treat it as a gift and understand that if we have not <coughs> tried to ponder, if we have not tried to ponder over the verses of the Quran, then we don't even understand why it was revealed. So every one of us needs to try our best to ponder over the verses of the Quran and inshallah, this is what we will be trying to do during the month of Ramadan. I encourage myself and yourselves to try our best 
to read a portion of the Quran in a language that we understand as well. Because without that, we won't be able to succeed. Imagine Allah sends with us a manual to say this is how you should operate yourself and we don't know about that manual. I decided to spend a few moments to explain the importance of this book because it is the month of the Quran and not only the recitation in the Arabic language. Yes, that is important, very important. But more than that is to understand the Quran, the message of Allah. I've heard people saying it is haram to read the meaning of the Quran. Where did they get that from? We want to know how can we behave like those of the previous scriptures and prohibit our people from trying to understand the word of the one who made them. When Allah asks me after I've died and you that I sent a book. Did you read it? Did you try to understand it? What will our answer be? And then if he were to ask us how many books have you read and understood and we will be mentioning all the novels and all the little story books and fairy tales and bedtime stories that we've read. We give preference to Harry Potter over the Quran. It's a fact. We give preference to all these other books over the Quran. It's a fact. I think it's about time we use this Ramadan to change that. We can change it and this is why we have reminders of this nature. This is why we are standing up here reminding ourselves and yourselves to say it is about time Ya Ummat Al-Quran, O Ummah, O Nation whom the Quran has been sent to to try and understand this book. I guarantee you it will change your life. I guarantee you it will raise you in spirituality without a bat of eyelid. Allahu Akbar. That is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. There are rules and regulations governing how to deal with a question that crops up on your, in your mind whilst you are reading the meaning. Those questions need to be answered by the professionals, the ulama, those who know. So when you come across a verse, you will find if there is a question in your mind, it would be wrong for you to answer it on your own. Go and ask the ulama. I read this verse, I don't understand it. But there are so many verses in the Quran that are very easily understood. The stories of the prophets, which makes the bulk of the Quran. That's why we want to go into it this year. Very easily understood. Allah tells us about Nuh, Noah. Allah tells us about Jacob, about Joseph, may peace be upon them all. Allah tells us about Lut, Lot, may peace be upon him. So it's important inshallah for us to make an effort to try and read these stories to try and see why Allah revealed them why Allah sent them down for what reason and then inshallah we see how everything is connected when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers to mankind he selected the best <coughs> he did not send messengers from amongst the worst or the mediocre of community. No. A Rasul or a Nabi was always selected the best of them. And this is why there are certain qualities that all the prophets had. We need to know these qualities. Because if we'd like to continue the work of the messengers, we need to try and learn from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected and chose, may he choose us all to serve his cause. Allah says regarding some of his prophets, Innahu kana mukhlasa. Definitely he was chosen. Then Allah says, Inna Allah astafa adama wa nuhan wa ala ibrahim wa ala imran ala al-alameen. Allah has chosen. Inna Allah has tafa. Istafa means to choose. Inna Allah has tafa Adam. Allah chose Adam. Alayhi salatu was salam. We believe that whenever we say the name of a messenger, it is our duty to say, may peace be upon them. They have done a splendid job. In fact, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that there is a curse upon the one 
who says Muhammad without saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May peace be upon him. So some of these qualities, the messengers were always truthful. They never uttered a lie, even prior to prophethood. Never uttered a lie, even prior to prophethood. They were known by their people as truthful, always. One might ask, what about Ibrahim alayhi salam? We'll get to that inshallah. It's not actually a lie. It was something. And inshallah, when we speak about Ibrahim alayhi salam, in a few days time, we will get there. They were trustworthy and they were known as trustworthy. All of them. So in order for us to be chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to try our best to also be truthful and trustworthy. Because if a person is not truthful and utters lies, there is a chance they become champions of the devil and shaitan. Shaitan becomes pleased with them. We don't want that. So it's about time we started telling the truth. And it's about time we were honest and trustworthy. Then all the messengers were trained in a specific way. Do you know what the Prophet says? Ma min nabiyin illa wara al ghanam. There was no Nabi except that he was a shepherd at one stage. He looked after some sheep. So Allah trained them. Allah trained them with sheep, with animals before they came to human beings. Because what is more difficult? To look after animals or to look after human beings? I see the smiles. MashaAllah. Does someone have a doubt here? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our understanding. It is definitely more difficult to look after animals. But in the Quran, Allah describes certain people. He says, There are certain people who are like cattle and in fact worse than cattle. Because with the sophisticated minds and brains and eyes and ears and noses that Allah has given mankind, they still don't want to hear, they don't want to see, they don't want to understand. Allah says, for those type of people, can we equate them to cattle? No, they are worse than cattle. Allahu Akbar. May Allah not make us from amongst those. So it's important for us all to have the quality in us to want to propagate what we have. We want to dish out what we have. That is a quality. The messengers had that quality. They wanted to give the message. They wanted to always spread the goodness. They were not selfish with it. So every time we learn something, let us try and think of ways of how to spread it. To whom? Let me tell you to whom. There was a stage when Muhammad was instructed to start primarily with his family members. So we start with those around us. We try and remind them. We want to tell them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Then there is another quality of the messengers. They were very intelligent. Allah did not send, astaghfirullah, people who were thick to a nation. No. Allah sent highly intelligent people. Look at Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah says, subhanallah, that he had given Ibrahim al-hukmah wa nubuwata. Allah gave him so much. Allah gave him prophethood. Allah gave him wisdom. Allah gave him authority. When he was a young boy, look at how intelligent he was. He began questioning and he debated. Did you ever know that the messenger who has debated the most was Ibrahim alayhi salam? His debates are mentioned in the Quran. Allahu Akbar. He had the most debates. From a young age, he questioned. He asked the questions. And this is why for us, when the young ask questions, find answers for those questions. Sometimes they are innocent questions. And we rattle out words of rebuke to these youngsters without even knowing that this might have shaped some negativity in the youngster's mind that will last forever because we did not answer the question. So it's important for us to try and look at the questions that are being asked. And we need to ask questions as well. There was a time when people used to say, don't ask. No, in Islam, it is simple to understand. We ask, but we have Iman that when we are given an answer from Allah's revelation, we surrender to it. There we are. So there are certain things we may never understand, but we will try our best to. And there are certain explanations for as long as those explanations are coming from revelation, inshallah, we surrender to them. It's important for us to know this. 
So the Anbiya were always highly intelligent. Another quality of the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Physically, they did not have any defect that was repulsive. Repulsive meaning chase people away. Rather, when you looked at them, you felt like getting closer. Allahu Akbar. All the messengers were described as very handsome. All of them. And they were not only good looking, but they had this like magnetism. Do you know what Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu says about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He says, Wallahi, when I saw the face of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I knew that this is not the face of a liar. The other Sahaba radiallahu anhum describe him and say, Ka'annahu qit'atu qamar, Allahu Akbar, as though he's a piece of the moon. Subhanallah. And they have all said, we have never seen anything more beautiful, more handsome than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those who did not see the light and who did not come closer to him, they had to be really, really rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that to happen. It is reported that it is enough for a person to look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or to be in his company in order to be totally rectified and known as a sahabi and deserve after his name the word radiyallahu anhu. May Allah be pleased with him. Just by being with him for a moment as a mu'min, as a believer. But there were others who were fortunate and unfortunate. Who were they? They were the likes of Abu Jahl and the enemies of Islam who fought Islam and they fought Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were fortunate in that they lived in his midst, but they did not look at him with the eye of sincerity even once. Not even once. So for that reason, they did not receive that cleanliness. They did not re receive that spiritual level of Sahabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again has chosen the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then there is another very important point that we need to know. The messengers were all protected by Allah from committing sin. All of them were ma'sumin. Ma'sumin meaning they were protected by Allah from committing sin. Now one might ask, what about this deed that was done by Musa alayhi salam? Inshallah, we will get to that. What, what about that which was done by this Nabi or that Nabi? We will get to that inshallah. They were protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from sin. And we need to know that and we believe that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter has kept certain merits in these messengers. The messengers, whenever they spoke, whenever they uttered, whatever they said, was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through divine revelation. And we know this about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says in Surah Al-Najm, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ He does not utter anything from himself. It is indeed revelation that was revealed. It was revelation that was revealed. So one might say, well look, once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked away from Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu anhu and the Quran came and admonished him. So people say, well what was that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a lesson for us in that because sometimes it is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let something happen so that when the solution of it is shown or when the remedy of it is shown the lesson can remain up to the end we learn a lesson from that that no matter how high you are no matter how knowledgeable you are no matter how much you think you know when you are corrected Take it properly and accept it and be happy that you are corrected. When the Prophet ﷺ was corrected, why was he corrected? Why did he make a mistake in the first place? Because had he not been made to make that mistake, where in his sunnah would there be a lesson for those who make mistakes to learn from? Subhanallah. So it was part of his perfection to make that mistake for us to have a perfect example to follow so that when you make a mistake, you know what to do because when he did it, he was also shown or he showed us what exactly to do. I hope we've understood this. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about how the messengers, none of them sought a reward. None of them wanted money in return for their message. None of them wanted 
to gain some form of popularity through their message. No. This is why in Surah Yasin we know the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a man who came from the innermost part of the city and he says, Follow those who are asking no recompense from you. They don't want any reward from you. Follow those who are rightly guided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Also, it is very important to know that the messengers came with a direct message. They did not beat about the bush. When Lut alayhi salam came to his people, he told them directly, abstain from homosexuality. He didn't say, yeah, you know, now there's something you guys need to worry about and there's something we need to talk about. No, the messengers, they came with a direct, clear cut message. And they delivered it as it was given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will see that in the Quran. Also, we will know or we will notice that the messengers, they had firm belief in monotheism. They worshipped Allah alone. If there was anyone who worshipped anything with Allah or besides Allah, they were not messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They worshipped Allah alone. And they believed in the unseen and they promoted the unseen and they gave preference to the hereafter over this life. Now, the last question we have for this evening, why talk about stories of the prophets in the Quran? Why? Why does Allah make mention of these stories? Well, Allah answers the question, who can there be better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer the question? And Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِّأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ مَا كَانَ حَدِيثًا يُفْتَرَى وَلَكِنْ تَصْدِيقَ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَتَفْصِيلَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُدًى وَرَحْمَةً لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ Indeed, in the stories of the previous nations and in the stories of the prophets are lessons for those with sound intellect. Allah says, it was not fabricated. It was not at all fabricated, but it is a lesson. And the details of everything are made mention of for those who believe we need to believe. So Allah says it is a lesson for us. When the people of Noah, may peace be upon him, when the people of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, transgressed, how long did they transgress for? For many, many years. What was the result? We all know they were drowned in the floods. They were destroyed. So what will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing all of us that look, it might appear to you that the forces of evil are winning and the forces of goodness are losing. But Allah says, don't worry. It's just a matter of time. When we pull, we pull completely. And Allah says, always the winners are those who are in the force of goodness. Always. Maybe not immediately, but ultimately. And this is why Allah speaks about entry into Jannah. And he says, do you think it's going to be easy to enter into Jannah? Do you think it's going to be simple? Do you think you're going to enter Jannah without a test? This life is a test. Allah says, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ Allah says, Do you think you are going to enter Jannah? And that which afflicted those before you has not yet come to you. They were tested and they were shaken and they were tested in so many different ways with trials and tribulations, with war and sickness until the messengers from amongst them said, when is the help of Allah going to come? Imagine for a messenger who is sent by Allah to say, when is the help of Allah going to come? And then Allah says, then we said, lo, the help of Allah is very near. Subhanallah. Which means you are tested right to your peak. I always like to give the example of a school. The higher you go, the greater the test. 
the more difficult it is. And remember, your life is not in the school. Your life, the real life that you are living is outside the school. I mentioned this on Friday. So those who don't understand that the life in the school is just a test and they need to work as hard as possible, whether they like the school or not, whether they like the work or not, whether they like the teachers or not, whether they enjoy the uni wearing the uniform or not, they need to wear the uniform, they need to work hard, they need to try their best, they will pay in order to attend the school and they must write the exams every so often. And every time they write an exam, they will have a higher qualification than the previous exam. And when they graduate, they will now with that certificate be able to do whatever they want in the world. The higher the qualification, the more chances you have. Let us take that example and put it into our lives. Our life compared to the akhirah and the life after death is like a school. So we are in the school now. We will have tests every year, every second year. We will have so many difficulties. We will have to dress in a specific uniform, in a specific way. We will have to do certain things. We will have to engage in things we may not like or may, they may be difficult to engage in. And every time you write a test, you have a certificate of a higher level. And the, the, the greater the test, the more the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when we die, what will happen? We have the ultimate certificate. We can do what we want thereafter in the akhirah. When you have all A's, what will happen? Allah will say, Enter into Jannah with peace. Here's your certificate. And Allah speaks about it in the Quran, how he will give it in the right hand. Allahu Akbar, may he give us all our books in the right hand. This is the month of Ramadan. We need to earn the forgiveness of Allah. Let us take this month seriously. Let us make an effort every day to fulfill the taraweeh correctly and to try and listen to a message or two on a daily basis, to make an effort with the Quran, to fast properly, to try and change our lives. Bad habits need to be kicked out. Music CDs need to be changed with Quranic CDs. And with the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be asked, life is too short. So many people are dying. There are people who've passed on just before the month of Ramadan. Where were they? Allah did not accept them to see the month of Ramadan. Or we can word it differently. Allah had mercy upon them and took them away. May Allah open our doors. Indeed, we are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be gathered in his home. There are people as we are speaking who are suffering across the globe. And I'm talking of Muslimin who are homeless who were wealthy moments ago, but they are being bombarded on a daily basis. Whether it is in Libya, whether it is in Afghanistan or Pakistan or Iraq or Somalia or Sudan, wherever it is on the globe, in Palestine, anywhere on the globe, there are so many who are unable to gather in this manner that we have gathered here this evening. So let us take this as a gift of Allah. Let us never feel too lazy because if we are not to seize the opportunities that Allah gives us, they will stop at some point and we will not be able to then have the opportunities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to seize the opportunities when he has given them to us. He says that I give you the opportunity of your good health. You should seize it before it does not exist anymore or before sickness overtakes you. Your life before death overtakes you. Your wealth before poverty overtakes you. Your free time before occupation overtakes you. Your youth before old age overtakes you. It's important for us to make use of this. Inshallah, we, are, we will meet here by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tomorrow at the same time. And we will commence with the stories of the creation of man. And we hope and pray that Allah accept us all and grant us every form of goodness. Jazakumullahu khaira wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu